Everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, Ian Zandy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I need a catchphrase or something? No, nah, you don't need a catchphrase. Let's leave the catchphrase into me. Okay, that's we're What's a one your catchphrase phrase? kind of I don't think I have a catchphrase. It's, I mean, we have a tagline. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the the movies thing, and then there's a uh, a button at the end, which I don't want to jump into now. Song too, yeah, yeah. But I, to be fair, that song is a snippet that uh, a much more talented beat maker has made. Uh, I thought you played it live and every <laughs> time. Yeah, every time. Mm. Really pulling back the curtain for you. I'm not, <laughs> not musically talented. I, okay. I gave up on all of my musical abilities. <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever play any music? Mm, yeah, I actually just got a ukulele from a friend too. But I mean, I just know like chords and tabs and. I think that's like all that, you need, so. though. Yeah, you can play a few ukulele fun <laughs> you times. You can play every Beatles song that way, and that's it. No, somebody. <laughs> I used to have. There, were, uh, there was something about. Well, I wanted to play guitar, mm. and I couldn't. I was, it was, I was not good at it. I played a few chords. I couldn't get bar chords right. And then somebody was like, "You should try the ukulele." Out. And I tried that, and was also like, "No, this is just. <laughs> this is just. I, if I can't do a guitar, I certainly can't do a ukulele. It's smaller. And, it's yeah. smaller. It's more <laughs> intricate. It requires more. I don't know. It's not for me. <laughs> music is music is something I admire, but cannot do myself. That's what I. That's what I present myself. To. <laughs> what I can do. Let's talk about weird movies. Yeah. Like this one. All right. The well, movie you've chosen to talk about is today. the weirdest movie. <laughs> Killing of a Sacred Deer. Yes. What a pick. <laughs> this. Oh boy, oh boy. What what led you to this one? What led me to this one? A24. They make fantastic movies. They it's do. Uh, the production company. Yep. Um, Love a good A24 movie. Yeah. Uh, it's not, that's not Megan Allison, right? That's uh, Anna Perm is Megan Allison, I think. Mm, or it could think... be wrong. Let me look. Yeah, we can look that. Uh, they did Swiss Army Man. I yep, that. love uh, Swiss Army Man. Yeah, that's a fun one. One of my absolute favorites. They did Spring Breakers, which is one yeah. of my top five of all time. Of all time? Top three. Oh, wow. Yeah. I saw it once. I really dug it, but... Spring wow, Breakers all is time. Abs, one of my all-timers. Wow. You can't... I, there's, there's a that's few... That's the one where... So, there's two of those that came out around the same time. Bling Ring... And, and Spring Breakers Spring. and both Which one has James Franco? That's Spring Breakers Okay Spring Breakers that one more. And James Franco Should have gotten An Oscar <laughs> nomination For doing that Yes That movie is Fucking phenomenal A24 Especially now They've They've really put out A slate of really Solid work Yeah Yeah and Killing of a Sacred Deer <laughs> Is a very Odd uh, A very oddball Part of their library Yes As it were Yes um, not a fan. <laughs> Obviously not. You wouldn't be here on the couch um, otherwise. No, it's uh, it's directed by ah oh, man. How do we say his name? So Yorgos, Yorgos Lanthimos. Yes, uh, he did last year's The Favorite. Right, big which, fan of that. I one. loved The Favorite. Yeah. I loved The Lobster, which he also I did. did as well. Yep. He sort of burst onto the scene with Dog Tooth, which I haven't seen. I haven't seen, seen that one. So that was his first. He's because he's Greek, so that was a foreign right. language. And that got nominated for Best Foreign Language Film. Okay. I've never seen it. I hear it's extremely strange. You know the plot of that one at all? Uh, no. I don't know anything about that one. So Dogtooth is basically a movie where they take... Uh, it's, bas- it's, it's a family where the mother and father have led their daughters to believe that they are the only people who exist in the world. And oh, okay. Apparently it gets into some like weird... Like Sort of, but okay. I think a little bit more psychosexual drama kind of stuff. Okay. Sort of in the same... I mean, I, I, I haven't seen it, so I can't... I'm, I'm just <laughs> guessing. But I would imagine it's sort of the same vein as Killing of a Sacred Deer, where it's mm-hmm. very strange and, and stilted and stuff that makes you feel uncomfortable, <laughs> like Killing of a Sacred Deer does. Yes. Yes. So you watched it. Mm-hmm. What were you feeling? Why did you Why did you decide to watch the movie? Why did I just... Dis- yeah, yeah. So I, I must have seen the trailer. I rewatched the trailer. I'm like, oh, this does not represent the movie at all. Um... But what led me to it? Movie Pass, um, okay, which was at its height of its popularity. Oh uh, man, I miss Movie Pass. About a year ago, I think. Yep. Um, probably, maybe even two years. But uh, Los Feliz Three. I'm like, yeah, I, I go to movie. 
movies. When I see a ton of fucking movies. Um, and, like, it looked really cool visually. Um, I did like The Lobster. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite wasn't out yet or anything. Of, of course, this came before that. Right. Um, but, yeah, went in not knowing much about it. I like Colin Farrell. I knew he was in it. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole Kidman, uh, too. Nicole Kidman as well. Um, and then I think largely unknowns besides those two. Yeah, the only other person in the movie who had really gotten any sort of traction mm-hmm. and first of all and by before we get too deep into it just let's 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 back up a little bit yes the killing of a sacred deer is a 2017 psychological thriller film directed by yorgos lanthimos from a screenplay by lanthimos and uh if thymus philippou another geek another another greek another yeah. greek geek colin farrell nicole kidman barry keoghan who's a, who's the young uh the young man who plays oh, Barton, yes. yes who was in dunkirk I saw Dunkirk here. after this movie, and uh, it made me hate Dunkirk. Because really? Like, oh, he's the really same like kid. the same kid. Yeah. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. But he dies in Dunkirk. <laughs> he does. So he fits. He, he sees the fate that he almost did in killing the sacred deer. Um, Alicia Silverstone's in this. Wait yes. a minute. From Clueless. She's yeah. in it for. It's like a cameo. Well, she plays his mom. Stone. Oh, that's yeah. Alicia Silver. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see I Alicia think. Silverstone. Yeah. Um, so, the film follows a cardiac surgeon who secretly befriends a teenage boy with a connection to his past. He introduces the boy to his family, who began to fall mysteriously ill. It received positive reviews, grossed over $6 million worldwide, competed for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, and... Wait a minute. It's a... It's, this is a weird... Yeah. It's a weird... I watched it yesterday... How did you feel? So you saw it in theaters. How did it feel yep. being in theaters watching this I movie? wanted to leave about... So I, I kept giving it a chance. I'm like, okay, 20 minutes in. First of all, I mean, we'll get into it, I'm sure. But, like, the dialogue is so off-putting. And yeah. that's that's the number one thing that's just, like, putting me on edge. Um, I Not knowing much about it, I didn't know if it was supposed to be a horror or a comedy. Or, am I supposed to be laughing at this? Right. Um, but I wanted to leave, like... 20 minutes in and I don't I, I sit through a lot of movies I did sit through the whole thing because I'm like maybe it'll get better maybe there's a reason for all this mm-hmm. it's just shy of two hours so it's a yeah. long one to actually it's sit a long through one. and, and yeah. be in I'm glad it doesn't go over I'm glad I think it hits about the perfect amount of time mm-hmm. for you to not want to to be out of it completely yes like I did I was watching it yesterday and I did check out a little bit during it just because the here what my what my problem with the movie was and I and I remember I told you last night when I saw you <laughs> yeah. I was like I still don't know how I feel about this movie <laughs> and I kind of even now talking to you I still don't a hundred percent know how I feel about and, it and uh, I saw it a second time over the weekend mm-hmm. um, yesterday and a little bit this morning um, I liked it a slightly more at the second right. time uh, again maybe it's just because I've had two years to sit and think of me. Right. Um, and I know what the ending's like and I, everything like that, so maybe it makes a little more sense yeah. that I know what I'm getting myself into. I think part of what this movie... The, the, Yorgos Lanthimos is an interesting director. This is the yes. thing I've really... After watching three of his movies now, he's a very specific kind of director. Mm-hmm. He's going to be doing a lot of shots that are at angles that make you feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And... A lot of motion, a lot of tracking shots. Yeah. Very quick editing for the most part. He doesn't do a lot of long takes of things. Mm-hmm. And everything is at, and like I said, it's at strange angles. So he's a very disorienting director yeah. visually. So I like that. Oh, I love that. I think I, that I, stuff <laughs> is great, especially in, in the settings that he has chosen to make his movies in. Mm-hmm. The lobster in the sort of weird dystopian hotel. Mm-hmm. Killing of a Sacred Deer largely takes place in a hospital. Yep. And the favorite is in castles. Yep. Or a, a country house, yeah. rather. Tapestries and, and yes. things like that. Anywhere. So it's big and it's very ornate, or and it, but it also feels kind of cold. He, yeah. he makes places the feel... The lighting and everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing with Killing of a Sacred Deer is... It's so apparent that he directed these people <laughs> to play everything as flat as possible almost the entire movie. Yes. And I'm not sure how much that works. It's, yeah, because it's not only the dialogue, the words they're saying, 
but then also the the way they deliver it as well. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, oh, if you watch a, a Wes Anderson movie, yeah, these people are talking in ways that people don't normally talk. Like right. the opposite almost, like height of the intelligence. Nobody knows those words. Right. Um, and there's very rapidly, or, or Cohen Brothers, they're another one um, where it's like, oh, you could read it or hear any piece of dialogue from their movies and know it's a Coen brother. Movie. Right. Same so, way, yeah, Quentin Tarantino, same Tarantino, way. Tarantino, yep. Very, you know, of, of definitely a writer-director combo. You yes. know, you got your certain style in place. Yes. Yoris Lanthimos, I think, is a person, di- directorially, who has a style that is very polished and refined. Mm-hmm. And his writing fits that to some degree, but... There's something about, I'm, and, I, and I'm guessing this had to have been a directorial choice on his part, the level of disconnect <laughs> between what's actually being said and the way that it's being said. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's kind of, it's, it's off-putting. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, too, that I saw today, he, he didn't write Favorite. Right, uh, yeah. He directed it, which, I mean, the dialogue, very different. Um, but still, the delivery and everything is very much, I don't know, got, Almost, uh, what's the word? Stone face, the comedy thing. Uh, dry. <laughs> dry, yeah. yeah. Uh, deadpan. Deadpan, there you go. Yeah, deadpan. there we go. Yeah, that's it. Well, because um, everything is being in all of his movies. Yes. Everything is very much, is very, is played seriously. Mm-hmm. And it still works on a comedy level because I think he understands how to, how to walk that line. And there's some very funny moments that come out of the blue. Um, yeah, like, I don't know if we want to get into it. No, no let's go, let's get into it. We yeah. can spoil away. This yeah. is a this is a spoiler. So zone. let's see. There's my favorite. And, uh, there's the the part when Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman are having the argument yes, in the kitchen. Yes, I think this is the same. This is the funniest <laughs> scene of the whole movie because then he start because Nicole Kidman and Colin Farrell. This is by the way after Nicole Kidman has given. This movie can definitely be clinical is the best way to describe this movie. Yeah. She's given just a sad, a, a very sad, angry hand job in a car, and then they and then she comes into this kitchen. They're having an argument that she th- she she basically like lashes out at him for mm-hmm. being in a flirtatious mode with uh, Marvin's mom, right? And for lying about his drinking, and then he starts to freak out. And he talks about virgin pubes and starts turning and throwing things around their kitchen looking yeah. for having this fake argument. They're like, so basically it's a, they're like, ah, we got to break this curse. We got to save our kids. He's like, oh, oh, I know how to do it. We'll just get a lobster's tail and a virgin's pubes and the glasses of the hen that lives next door. Where are they? I could have sworn I left. And he just goes full ham. And I'm like, I just want a full movie of this. It's like Tom Hardy and Venom. Just like eating the scenery. I want to see that. That's the... Colin Farrell, <laughs> re, he goes for it, Oh, man. he does. He, I, I just want to see that. <laughs> this movie... And it's, there's a lot of parts of this movie that I do think are really funny, which I, I like a movie that is one genre, but has yeah. ways of putting in comedy into a dramatic or a, or a scary yeah. or thriller type of situation. Like, there's this... there The parts when the, the son, Bob... Is crawling around oh, yeah. on the floor and being like, "I'll go water the plants right now, Dad. It's cool." <laughs> and the dad's like, "No, don't. Just stay, just stay in your bed, please." <laughs> These kids are so. It's funny, yeah, and it's weird, and I kind and that's the parts that I like. But then the other parts, it's like you're talking for. A lot of the first ten minutes of the movie is just doctors talking about a watch. Yeah, it's it's like shooting the shit, but like, like okay, maybe it'll come back later. It never does. Right. They never reference it again. <laughs> and they're talking about it in a way, it, as far as the actual inflection of their voice, mm-hmm. that doesn't feel human. No, no. It, it's not only the families that feel cold, but like everyone, we see a little bit of their exterior world um, with the doctors mostly, but mm-hmm. yeah, everyone's talking just, and like there'll be very random moments. Um be like, have you started your period? Oh yes, I did the other morning. Would you yeah. like lemonade? I love lemonade. It's like, wait, they're bringing, what? <laughs> they're bringing up just out of nowhere that the daughter's having the period multiple times. A lot, <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of discussion of periods in this yes. movie. Yes, yes. To a point that doesn't feel. I look. I had I, my parents were both medical professionals. Mm-hmm. My mom was a nurse and my dad was a doctor, and they. 
I couldn't imagine them ever talking about my sister having her period <laughs> as much as they talked about their daughter having her first period in this yeah. movie. And they're so open about it. Which is... I uh, guess it's yes. like... But like... Good for a movie for talking about it, but right. then also... Oh, and the, the, the way they have sex in the movie, too. It's just... The, the females the, will just... They just lie they'll strip down and they'll just lie down. Like like submissive, I guess. Maybe that's the the whole I mean it seemed like it was role playing because yeah. the the line that Nicole Kidman said was general anesthetic and yeah. then she just lies. <laughs> and, and but then her kid knows to do that too? It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. There's a lot of this movie that I feel like I'm just gonna have to accept the choices that Yorgos Lanthimos made <laughs> As they are, yeah. Like I, I there's I admire the swings, the even swing. if the even if it doesn't always connect. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's there's something I saw once um, at, at Roast Battle where people do terrible on that show all the time, mm-hmm. and a, a, a <clears throat> refrain that that Dave Chappelle started, but a couple other people have sort of brought up again and again is that even if you miss the beauties in the attempt. And I think that that's what is that's what makes me not feel completely like I wasted my time watching mm-hmm. this movie. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like it was a it, like that both it, times it, you wasted your time, or do you feel like you because you said you were able to enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, I, I enjoyed time. it a little more that because I'm like, okay, I know the tone of this movie. I'm not going to be completely off, but right. Um, and the third act, I would say, is is much better than the the first two acts of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, there's a little more traction. In, in, in general, people just don't have motivation until the kids start to get sick. Right. And then even then, the parents aren't that concerned. Like, you'll see moments where they're crying or something like that. But it's not like, oh my god, let's let's try and... I don't know, there's no media attention to it or anything like... But we can live in this world. I'm okay accepting that. Yeah. But it's a little strange. But yeah, it's just uh, and the way they like called things like MP3 players, I'm like nobody calls MP. They clearly have iPhones. What are they? Right. And I don't know what time this is supposed to be. No, taking place I don't know in. either. There's a lot in this movie. I think the person acting wise who makes the most sense, yeah. as far as the tone of the movie and, and fitting the vibe, is Barry Keoghan. I would agree because. Yeah. His character is supposed to be this cold... I don't know if he's a wizard of some kind who's cast this weird disease on, on the family. I read a lot of, like, sacred of the deer... Uh, <laughs> killing of a sacred deer explained and things like that article. So I'm like, maybe I'm just too stupid to understand this movie. I didn't so, read any of those. So, tell, me, I, tell me what they said. So I didn't like, know that... It's I'm based sure on a Greek myth. myth. Um, I don't know that much about Greek mythology, but it's based on a Greek myth. Or some are saying, like, oh, it's a- Abraham and killing his son, and things like that. Right. I know biblical references a little bit more. Um, but he's supposed to be basically a, a-, a shoe-in for God. Okay. Um, and uh, that's why when she, like, kisses his feet and everything, that's why Nicole Kidman gets to live, and she doesn't get the disease, because gotcha. she's, like, bowing down to him and, and submitting. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah. I had no... I mean... A Greek filmmaker making a film about that's based on the Greek yeah. myth makes sense. What does the sacred deer have to do with it? Because they don't reference anything like that. I think that's in the myth. Oh, um, that's in the myth? Yeah. Okay. Again, don't know that much about that, but I guess... Well, let's take a look at yeah, the Wikipedia yeah, we page can pull it. see if I think it's anything. like one emperor killed another emperor's sacred deer, and then they were... Which is, in the film, that would be Colin Farrell killed this guy's dad. We're, uh, so. Let's see. It's based on the Greek tragedy Iphigenia in Aulis, which, let's see, it revolves around Agamemnon, leader of the Greek coalition before and during the Trojan War, his decision to sacrifice his daughter to appease the goddess Artemis and allow his troops to set sail to preserve their honor in battle against Troy. The conflict between Agamemnon and Achilles over the fate of the young woman perceived a similar conflict between the two at the beginning of the Iliad. So basically, it looks like they, it, it's, it is sort of loosely based on, let's see, cultural influence. <laughs> this is very loosely on the story where the choice, the, the movie really does, it, it, it takes a while for the actual main plot of the movie yeah. to kick in. Because you're sort of, 
the, there's a lot of that first 15, 20 minutes or so that is largely world building. I didn't even mark the time down when Marvin finally says that he, he basically says oh, the entire plot of what a, the rest yeah, of the movie is going to be. There's a big burst of just like exposition, which I think he openly admits to. He's yeah. just like, let me say this quickly. <laughs> he says, hey, I'm going to say this as quickly as yeah. I can because I know I'm wasting your yeah. time. He's like, four B, he's like, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. You'll bleed from your eyes. And then this is what you could do to save it. Any questions, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so they they take the time, and basically the, the plot of the movie is set in motion really at that yes. point. Yes. You don't know a whole lot others uh, of other stuff besides that. You're just getting to know these characters. Which world building is good, but like there's no uh, quote unquote save the cat moment. I don't care about Colin Farrell. Why he killed a man? Like <laughs> right. I like him because he's Colin Farrell. But Colin Farrell is a good actor. But Colin Farrell's character in this movie, yes. <laughs> what's, what's his name? What's his Stephen name? Murphy. There you go. Stephen Murphy is not a good person. No. That is that much is obvious from from fairly early on in the movie. Mm-hmm. Given all the references to his past and the way he's behaving in situations. I mean, there's a lot of people in this movie who are behaving in ways that don't make sense <laughs> logically. But I can almost excuse that because the whole movie takes place in this sort of zone where it feels like it's an alternate dream-like reality. But there's so much of this movie that's just like... (laughs) I don't... Like, do you you guys... You put all this time into making us, I I guess, understand these characters, but not really in those first 20 minutes or so, Mm -hmm. and then we lay it all out. I feel like it takes even longer. I feel like it takes like 30 or 45 minutes. I think it does, yeah, which is... And up until that point, it's just like things happening... I think there's only one callback that I really count there. At the, I think it's the opening scene. No, the opening scene is him doing surgery. It's maybe the next scene. He's in the diner with the kid. They're eating French fries. Kid's talking about how much he loves French fries. Right. That's a closing shot as well. It's him eating French fries. Like, all right. And the daughter eating the French fries the, too. Yeah, with ketchup on. Staring at each other. The yes. ketchup represents blood. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, think. that's another moment too. Oh where it's yeah. Like he bites off his arm. He's like, it's a metaphor. <laughs> he, it's says, so he literally weird. says, that. "I'm like, oh, wait." <laughs> I feel like. There's, this movie is definitely made for a certain audience. Yes. Can you imagine what it would be like if you were not the person who this movie was sort of designed for? I think it's designed for us. It because does, we want it to go watch too. it. Right. Yeah. It's definitely... If, you, if it was general public, you're saying? Yeah. If, there's, <laughs> if you're the person who would normally see Colin Farrell's in a movie and then go, yeah, I'll go see that movie. Oh, yeah. And then you walk into Killing the Sacred Deer... I mean, what do you think? I think he's in Dumbo this weekend, no? Colin Farrell's in Dumbo? I'm pretty sure, but Danny DeVito. <laughs> I know Danny DeVito is in Dumbo. Hold on. <laughs> Are you planning seen, on going to see Dumbo? I, I'm hearing uh, not so great things. <laughs> I've heard a lot of different things. I've heard a lot of people say that they're crying. Yeah, Colin Farrell's got top billing <laughs> in Dumbo. Who does he play? Colin Farrell. I don't know who he's playing. Or does he play a person? I think he's playing one of Dumbo's ears. Let's see. Will Smith was supposed to be in Dumbo. <laughs> Hold on. Will Smith he was got supposed the to be gig instead. the father. And then, well, no, he got Bad the Boys for Life. Dumbo? He was supposed to oh. be the father of the oh, kids okay. who hung out with Dumbo. Now he's in Bad Boys for Life. And now he's the genie. Oh, Bill Hader, Chris Pine, and Casey Affleck were all offered this role. Then Colin Farrell accepted it. So now he's a World War I veteran, a former circus equestrian performer from Kentucky, and the widowed father of Millie and Joe, who is hired to care for the newborn elephant. I'm ready to talk about Dumbo. <laughs> Let's talk about Dumbo. Dumbo. No, this movie... Okay, Yorgos Lanthimos, as a director, mm-hmm. what do you think it is about his choices in, in Killing of a Sacred Deer that feels so off-putting compared to what he's doing in his other movies? Yeah. Because you liked The Favorite a lot. I did. I, I, and I saw it a few times in theaters, actually. Really? Yeah, one of my... I just tell you, like, top three favorite of last year. Um, but yeah, I think it's mostly the fact that it drags so long. Like, if you cut the first ten minutes and then... I don't know. The, the acting choices, I think, is... It's not acting choices, but the acting direction... And the the dialogue choices. If uh, that got punched up a little bit, I think it's not a bad movie in general. It's not like The Room or anything like that. But right. it's, I, 
did not know what I was getting myself into the first time, for sure. Yeah. And this is... I'm looking at some of the awards this week. So it got an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but I don't think any Oscar recognition at all. It got zero Oscar nominations. It got a bunch of stuff. It only won... It won two awards. It won the Best Screenplay Award at Cannes. That makes sense. And then <laughs> Barry Keoghan got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Okay. For a couple different things. Uh, a lot of a lot of oh, little like music, film critics society too. awards. Music got nothing. No, did do you remember it? Uh, I do remember the music because they would do the thing where they like ramp it. It sounds like basically if you were sliding like a train door shut or something like that, just like me- metal yeah. vibrating. It reminds me. It's a lot of the <laughs> the sort of soundtracking that came about after. Oh god, what's the guy from Nine Inch Nails? What's his name? Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor. After oh, Trent Reznor did the screenplay, <laughs> yeah. the soundtrack for uh, Social, for Social Network. Network. It, it reminded me a lot of that, but it's just like they're trying to make you feel by turning the sound louder. It's, right. Uh, See, I don't mind that though. I feel like yeah. that's from a standpoint of if you're going to experience a movie, I like when something mm-hmm. is jarring that's happening that makes you feel uncomfortable, especially <laughs> in a movie that's designed. I I mean. I think this is a movie that is really designed to make you feel as uncomfortable oh, yes. as possible. Yes. It's interesting that they call it a psychological thriller because I feel like the 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 characters don't experience the weird psychology ness of it because they're they're just in this world where they kind of accept everything mm-hmm. that's happening as something that could feasibly happen, and they're just like, "Well, we got to deal with this." Yeah. Well, like uh, I don't know. Have you seen the movie Us yet? <laughs> I have. Yeah. Or it's. I can accept that world that there. Right. There's a lot of plot holes if you think about it. Yes. But like, if that's a world that they live in, that there's just a bunch of clothes. Oh, well, do we want to spoil? Well, that? let's let's. We know it's a movie about doppelgangers. If we, can we know it's a movie about doppelgangers, that it's a movie with where doppelgangers exist. Yes. That's I that's, think that's a that's point we can make leaving. without yes. saying yeah, too without much spoiling to spoil the movie. Yes. Because I did like us, and I don't want to spoil. I it don't. It's that relatively new. It. Yes. Yes. Um, but, but if we can live in that world, right, I then it's it. fine. Yeah. And I think that the characters in this movie, I don't feel like I'm I'm having a hard time picking up on them living in the world. Yes. But the mind fuck of it plays out in the audience's mind. Yeah. Which I can appreciate, though I still don't know how I actually feel about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. I don't know whether that makes it good or not. <laughs> my lean well, makes my, a good movie, though. I don't know. Man. <laughs> is that what this is about? <laughs> what, what, like, okay, what to you? What yeah. makes a good movie? What are some of your favorites? Uh, see, that's that's two different things to me too. What's some of my favorites? They're not necessarily good movies, but like, okay, if it's a well-crafted, uh, the best movie ever. I don't know. People say it's Citizen Kane or whatnot, but like, my favorite movie is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's not. The greatest movie of all time. It's still, a, that's it's a, a good movie, movie, though. It's a good movie in its genre for sure. Yeah, it's not. That's definitely not the greatest movie of all time. But like, I mean, yeah. my favorite movies of all time all sort of hover in the range of There Will Be Blood, Fantastic Mr. Mm-hmm. Fox, mm. Sig, uh, Spring Breakers, and uh, we need to not. We need to talk about Kevin. Though that is, I also oh, really that's like a good that movie. movie. Yeah, Dear Zachary. I don't think I know that one. So, Dear Zachary is a great movie. It's a documentary, and if you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna. Say, I'm not going to explain okay. it. It's one of those things. The simplest way I can say what it is without spoiling anything, which if anybody has not seen it, it's on Netflix. It's an hour and a half. It's it's an amazing hour and a half. Okay. I say, I recommend you take the time out. But basically, it's a movie that explains the the premise of the movie is it's a movie made for the son. Of a, of a guy who was murdered mm-hmm. so that he can watch and learn about his dad's life. Huh. And the the murder happens under some weird circumstances and there's a whole... There's, a, there's, there's this big investigation. It's a really fascinating movie. It's a big feat of editing. There's a lot going on in it, but it's a really gripping hour and a half and change. Okay. Definitely recommend it. Yeah, I'll check it out. But what those movies all have in common was they make me feel something. Yeah. And it might not necessarily be comfort or discomfort, but I think they strike the line of, I enjoy watching this movie, and I 
think it has uh, it has an aspect that affected me in a way mm. that made me go that made me feel outside of just an average movie going experience. I think Us does the same thing. I think yeah, Us and Get Out like. And, and I think those are two very different movies. I don't oh, think far we should be away. Yes. <laughs> comparing them too much. Right. But it's, yeah, it's when you walk out of the theater and you feel that. Uh, there is a um, Thoroughbreds. Did you see that movie? Yeah, I did. I, I, I like Thoroughbreds. Another movie I did not know much about going mm-hmm. in. And actually, very much like this movie, it's, it, you're kind of on edge the whole time. Not too much happens. Right. Um, but it's simple. It's based there. on a play. Yeah, yeah. He's a playwright. I yeah. think. Yeah, that's his main. That's his main artistic trait. Yeah, I, I don't know who it is, but I looked it all up at the time. Oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah. yeah, it came out like a year or two ago. Yeah, big fan of that movie. But you walk out with that feeling, just like, yeah, that was a really good movie. That's that's a landmark. Yeah, um, but this movie, I feel there's a part of me that's not like it's not like I didn't enjoy watching mm-hmm. it. But anytime I get to a point where I'm feeling okay with checking out of watching a movie, yes. that's when I know it's not fully holding my attention. Like, for me, if I had to rank this movie on, on a star scale, mm-hmm. I would give this probably a three out of five. Yeah. Like, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a terrible movie. I don't really regret watching it. I feel like I gained something. <laughs> yeah, neutral. I, I yeah, gained yeah. some perspective. It's a, it's, it's, it, it sure was a movie. <laughs> You know? Yes. But yes. Ha- but where would you... I mean, where do you feel where, where would I rank it? Yeah. Even um, now, you've watched it twice. Yeah, which... I mean, the cinematography... Cinematography. Cinematography. <laughs> that's... that's, that's uh, if I ever go into uh, to being a drag queen, <laughs> that's going to be my name. That's uh, that's crafty. And <laughs> that's what we call crafty out here. Uh, <laughs> crafty is food services that you get... Snacks that's another on snacks. set. <laughs> um... What was I talking about? But yeah, all the camera angles and everything. Right. I'm a fan of that. It's very much like The Shining. People call him the new Kubrick. I'll agree. He's, he's definitely heading in that direction. Yeah, I'd say um, so. I would love to see an outright horror movie from Yorgos Yeah, yeah. I think he's got the chops of making you feel a certain way based on the way he's making his it's movies. It's very much... Hmm, what was that? Good Time. Did you see that? Yeah. Where it's... They do the opposite. Love where it's, Good Time. It's your pupil of your eye and mm-hmm. that's what we're watching for the next minute right it puts you on edge big fan of that movie uh, but we Great cared movie. about the characters yep we cared about the plot it was very fast it's basically one big chase um the whole movie but yeah i think that's the big thing about this movie is that i don't care i care about the kids because they're kids and they're more innocent right uh, but I don't even really care. I mean, I'm, I don't really care about <laughs> the kids even that much. <laughs> no, there's no backstory or, or heart to that. Yeah. Um, that's the problem. With, it's a movie about a heart surgeon that's got no heart. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. That's a, that was an actual heart surgery, too. I got the. I watched it on Amazon Prime this time. There's a little, like, pop-up trivia. Oh, there they're is? Like, this I is... didn't know that. I watched it on Amazon Prime, too. I gotta turn that on. Yeah. I want to see some pop-up pop trivia. <laughs> <laughs> they should bring up back a pop up video. I don't know why they don't. Do they still make music videos? Yeah, I think they still make. I watched. Yeah. I watched some recent music videos. <laughs> I watched a Lizzo music video a little while. Oh, ago. Lizzo's cool. Lizzo's yeah, yeah. very. I watched the Truth Hurts music video okay. much lately. Okay. Because I keep hearing about. Well, that's the thing is sometimes they make music videos, but now they keep doing this thing where it's like it's an audio video and they just oh, yeah. it's a static picture that's maybe got. They've done this a lot for the new Jenny Lewis album. Where it's a static big picture, <laughs> big, huge, great yes. album. But it's all the static <laughs> picture, then it's like, we're going to make her sparkle a little bit. Yes. And that's how we're going to get away with or this lyric video. videos, which I'm cool with that, because like, I suck at lyrics. And, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean... But yeah, there's a, a little pop-up. That's what it was. So uh, it's a like, heart surgery. This is Colin Farrell at the Westmore Hospital, and he's watching, witnessing a real open heart surgery right now. It's like, oh, Ooh, that would be cool, too. Watch com- commentary on this. Or listen to it. I wonder who would do the best commentary for this. Colin Farrell, Nicole Kidman. I feel like the commentary for this would be very. It would be just as. Dr- I don't as buy videos anymore, movies. so that's a, a me either. I don't yeah. have a DVD. I don't have a DVD player or Blu-ray player. <laughs> no, I stream everything. Yeah, 
they probably, I don't know. They'll figure it out. Yeah. So, if there were a movie that you'd recommend people watch instead of Killing of a Sacred Deer, maybe something, mm. maybe something that does have some heart to it. Doesn't yeah. feel That's cold genre, and sterile. Or, not necessarily. Okay. But Good Time, I think, sort of fits Good in that Time, same I would way. say, is very, and that came out about a year before this movie. Yep. Um, might be 824. I think it is. I Robert think it Pattinson, is, yeah. people give him shit for Twilight and stuff, but, like, he's really grown out of that. He's in the next Nolan picture. Yep. Um, Looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, I would say check out Good Time. Um, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Ferris Day Off. Two very Two different very movies. <laughs> very different kinds of characters, but, bo- but both very solid ones. But yes. I think, uh, I, I think... I think this might be a, just a movie. I don't know if it's... For me, it's not yep. good or bad, but I feel like, boy, that exists. <laughs> you put a thing out did there. Did you know about this movie before I mentioned it? Mm-hmm. You did? Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd heard of it. I keep pretty up-to-date on uh, on on the trailers and things. Okay. So I'd seen the trailer yeah. a couple times. I remember feeling off-put by the singing in the trailer, and I was like, this is going to be a Oh, weird. yeah, because that's, that's another thing. It's on a cover of Ellie Goulding, Ellie Goulding I think. Yeah. Uh, Lights. Mm-hmm. Which is a couple of years old now. It's a weird. It's just, man. <laughs> look, I'm okay with art making me feel weird, yep. but I'm not okay with art that makes me feel weird that I can't connect to. I think that's yep. the message that I learned by watching this movie. So thanks for helping me figure You're it out. You're welcome. <laughs> Ian, thanks so much for coming in today, dude. Yeah, thank you, man. Where can the listeners find you? You're obviously our, over the Pack Theater. We do stuff there together. Yep, yep. Pack Theater. Um, I do some stuff at Sega City. Um, some indie shows around town, Los Angeles, but yeah, cool. mostly Pack and Second City. And if they want to follow you, what you got? Your social medias? Uh, yes, too much. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no, I post way too much. Um, you can find that at Ian Zandy on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Sure. <laughs> if you like this uh, this guy right here, I'm pointing at myself. If you're not watching this on YouTube. <laughs> Find me at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram, jlightcomedy.com. Oh, I see what you did there. Diet J, yeah. that's, a, that's an oldie, but a goodie. <laughs> uh, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. I will probably be in New York and a little bit out on the road in May, so keep your eyes peeled for that if you live in any of those places that I didn't really mention besides New York, because I haven't figured it out yet. Hopefully more details soon. And... If you like the podcast, leave a rating, subscribe, leave mm-hmm. a review, tell a friend, hit us up if you think if you think we're on the right track on social media. Go into the, the or backlog. If you, or if you disagree, yeah. The the backlog's listen good. to some of those old episodes, they're great. Right. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thanks so much for coming on today. You're yeah. welcome. Thank this, you, man. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. <laughs>